Okay, so uh, the first one says, I do a story-based feature every day at the same time. Are you saying that I shouldn't do any more stories on my show and let that be the S because I don't have enough breaks to do another story? Now, I'm not saying that at all, but let's say you do um, second date update every hour at uh, 10 and 20 uh, after the hour. So you've got story on the first half of the hour every hour on your show. That's a lot of story already. So you probably want to go lighter on story, lighter on the S in the other breaks because you want to represent the other types of content. But remember, I said that everything, every time you open the mic, every time you talk, you are telling a story. You're a storyteller, whether it's in a funny break or an information break or a, a, a games uh, break. So I would just say that if you're doing that, if, you've, if you're doing a story-based feature and it's on every hour and it's on in two different quarter hours, then the other parts of the quarter of the hour should probably be in the information, games, and something funny uh, that, that, that's going on there as well. Now, a lot of times uh, funny is infused across the show. It doesn't have to be a feature. It doesn't have to be, okay, let's set aside some time and be funny now. It could be that funny is infused into second date update into your story based feature. So that's that's the ideal way to use that. But you do want to make sure that you keep some balance. Um, question from Dale is uh, this may be a dumb question, but how many breaks are we talking per hour? I'm in an off time, roughly uh, four breaks per hour. Um, four breaks per hour is pretty standard. Um, I, I liked, yeah, well, one, in, in talking about building clocks, and I've got a whole seminar on, uh, on clock construction. I like personalities to have a very frequent presence on the air, but that doesn't mean a lot of full breaks. Um, I think the personality should be on every five to six minutes throughout the hour, but that doesn't mean you're doing a full break every five or six minutes. I think four breaks, one per quarter hour, positioned properly is just about right. Four big content breaks. But along with that, there's a lot of the sense of today. Uh, maybe you've got a couple of information updates that are in addition to that, uh, that are, maybe it's coming out of a stop set. You're talking over an intro, you're doing some teases, you're doing some, uh, well, I call them handshake breaks, where you're reflecting the audience. Maybe you're maintenancing a topic that you've got going on from one break to the next. Let's say you start a phone topic. Uh, during the information break, you start a phone topic, invite the audience to participate. Um, you come, uh, you, you, you put between the next two songs, you are giving them a tease with a couple of things that people have said already. Then you go into the first big break, but you've talked about it five or six times, which gives it a much larger presence. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about personality presence. I think personalities don't have nearly enough presence, uh, enough significance on the, uh, uh, on the air uh, as much as they could and as much as they should. I, I think a lot of times that is a function of a program director's clock or interpretation of a clock that I only want you talking during the breaks and you got to keep it really short. But you don't have to do it that way. I mean, there, there, there are a, a lot of ways that you can have a presence, a lot of ways that you can um, make that connection with the audience without replacing the song count. So I, th I think that's really, really important. Darren says, I do a, a daily topic with listener reaction and run the phone through one full hour and dedicate that hour to the topic and calls. Is this a good idea to focus the hour or spread it out over the show? The, look, Darren, this is a really good way of doing this. And I've got a couple of shows now who are doing that as well. Um, now, they're not doing a daily topic. They're doing an hourly topic. Uh, for the most part, where every hour you start with a new topic, you introduce it and you spread it through the hour. Um, so there's a presence of that topic every time you open the mic. Uh, you go into your information break and before you do it, you maintenance that topic. Hey, we're talking about this this morning. Here's our phone number. Can't wait for you to hear Brian's call is coming up here in a couple of minutes. But first, here's an update on what's happening in the world today. And you do your, your information break. Coming out of the information break, you maintenance it again. And, you're, just, and, and you're, you're, you're continuing the conversation, continuing the topic through a full hour. So anytime I jump in on it, I can participate on it. And then the next hour, it's gone and you turn it over and do something else. 
I've also got a show that does a story-based feature, and we're doing the same story-based feature every hour, but every hour we do it, we take a different angle on it. And so uh, it, we're, we're able to use some of the phone calls that have come in earlier and get the next hour jump started with it. And we can, can direct the way that we want that conversation to go. So I would tell you that if you're taking one topic and spreading it through the entire show, um, then I would uh, make sure that you're taking a different angle on that topic every time that you do it. Because otherwise, if I happen to have heard it before and I come back later and I'm tuned in again, okay, I've heard this already, been there, done that. Uh, but if it's the same topic, but a different story from that topic, a whole different angle, it's a different perspective. It's like a new episode in a series. And there can be some story arc qualities that, uh, that come from that. And that can be uh, highly valuable as well. Uh, next question comes from uh, Sherry, who says that uh, she is frustrated with her uh, show because she feels that she is funny and can be funny, but isn't given an opportunity to be funny because she doesn't have a partner and she's on a solo show. Uh, OK, so that makes it more challenging for sure. Uh, it is a lot easier to make funny things happen when you're on uh, a team show or when you've got someone that's feeding something back to you, that's teeing it up, that's making, that's giving you some sort of a stimulus and input. There's a lot of things that you can do with that. Use the listeners as your co-host. And, and by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, promote my uh, phone calls seminar again. I've got a, both an ebook that you can get at tjohnsonmediagroup.com. It's called Listeners as Phone, uh, Listeners as Co-Hosts, and another uh, seminar called Fill Your Phone Lines at uh, insidersradionetwork.com. But both talk about how you can use listeners as your co-hosts, use listeners to set it up and how you can recruit listeners and use some of those recurring listeners that call all the time and use them as co-hosts to interact with. And that can set you up so funny things can happen. You can also look for characters. A lot of times, you know, those annoying characters who call you all the time and annoy you, you can use them a lot as co-hosts, uh, because they will say some things that are outrageous and funny and will start a conversation. And it puts you when you're on with somebody else. But there are some amazing personalities who sound so conversational. They sound so one-to-one. -one. A couple of them are on uh, this uh, seminar today. One is um, uh, Corey Dillon from uh, a big here in San Diego, big 100.7 here in San Diego, who will be at Morning Show Boot Camp. You got to look her up when you're there. Uh, but she's so conversational and so natural. You would never know that she was on the air by herself. It sounds like she's having a conversation with you. And another, I'm not sure if Lisa Berry is on or not, but Lisa it has the same qualities. Uh, Lisa sounds like she's always in a conversation with you. And when you're in that situation, when, you're, when you sound like you're having a conversation and you're naturally funny, you'll find ways to let that personality and let that sense of humor come out through that conversation that you're having, even when you're on by yourself. So harder on a solo show, no doubt. Impossible, not at all. You can do it. You just have to work at it a little bit more and a little bit differently. Question is, what can be added to a do you think A or do you think B type of topic to make it interesting for the listeners? It seems once you've aired someone from each side, subsequent calls aren't adding entertainment value, perhaps using ringers to add more depth, context, rewarding content to their A or B response. Uh, great question. And I, I, you know, I, I thought about going into a little bit more detail when I presented that, because normally the last thing you want to do is ask a poll question on the air. You don't want to ask a yes, no question because it leads to a yes, no answer. And that is, as you point out, boring. Um, you want to have an open ended question that leads to stories. So you want to say, what should the, what should happen here? What's the next move? What happens next? What about this? What do you think of this? So you have the, the conversation, you have the debate. But if you want a resolution, you could end up where one of the personalities in the show says um, uh, women should only women who stay at home should be responsible for taking care of the kids and make sure the house is clean when her husband comes home. 
That happened on one of the shows that I work with uh, on, on the air this morning. And Personality B says, are you kidding? That's the most uh, old fashioned Stone Age point of view ever. Uh, they should have a real life. So you've got people with different points of view. You can boil. OK, so what do you think? If it become becomes A or B, if it becomes one or the other, which is it going to be? So you can turn a longer conversation that's happening over multiple breaks into a poll to tie it up and have a resolution. Now, a lot of these phone topics don't need a resolution. The end of the, I, uh, great timing on that question. It didn't need to be resolved by the end of the hour. Sometimes we'll bank what we think is the best call and save it for the end to give some sort of resolution so we can move on to something else. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of just said that I do not think all topics need to be resolved. In fact, I don't think most topics need to be resolved. Uh, there are some where a resolution is necessary and a resolution is um, welcome. I think that all topics need to have an end. They need to have a high point. They need to have an exit, but they don't have to have a resolution. It doesn't have to have an outcome necessarily. If you do have an outcome, I think it can be a cherry on top for some of them. But I, I, I kind of said the same thing in the last uh, question. Now, I want to point out one other thing in this. Uh, a lot of times we'll take the best call and save it for the end. I think that's a mistake. I do think the end of a break needs to have be a high point that leaves the audience excited, interested, looking forward, wanting to hear more. Um, but I don't think that saving your best call for the end is a good move. I would rather use the best call first because there's a much greater chance of everybody hearing it and you're going to get the conversation off to a really fast start. So if you have a great call right away, maybe it's a ringer or someone that you've set up or someone that you use from another station to get a topic going, don't save it for the end. Use it at the beginning because there will be more people there at the end if it starts fast. So always start with something fast that hooks the audience, that gets them engaged, that gets them excited, that gets them interested and keeps them uh, keeps them actively participating. There's a much better chance to keep you all the way uh, all the way through. Uh, Chuck uh, mentions in the chat that you can also tell your stories using different voices. Yeah, you're right. You can. Uh, and I think Chuck's uh, not saying it's um, uh, not like a Phil Hendry uh, using uh, uh, physical uh, different voices, but in a different voice. So you can tell a story saying, hey, this happened to my kid. So my kid came home from school and told me this, or this happened to my brother or my neighbor, or what would you do if this happened to you? This happened to a guy at work. Or you can tell it in third person. You could take an interesting story that happened uh, in Boise. And say, imagine this were you and this took place. And so you can tell the story through those voices, too. I think that's probably what Chuck is getting at there. But, yeah, using different voices and different tenses and different um, uh, different perspectives um, can uh, can create multiple stories. And, and by the way, that's a trick in storytelling. Uh, you can take the same story and maybe there's three characters in the story. Maybe there's a mom and her kid and a teacher at school. If you take that same story and the same facts that are in the story and tell that story through each of those three perspectives, you have a very different story. So now you can pick the best story. Which one's going to come off the best? Telling it from different angles, telling it from different, uh, different points of view. 